All right, welcome everyone. Hello, welcome to Jessica Payne Live. I'm your host, Jessica Payne, and I'm sharing the screen with an amazing person. Uh, I'm so excited, we have a great show today. Um, first and foremost, let me welcome you if you're watching this live. Thank you, as always, for joining me. If you're watching this on the replay, thank you so much. I know a lot of you do. A shout out to um, friends, family, and followers all around the world. Uh, who knows what time it is when you're tuning in? I always say grab a coffee or a cocktail, depending on your mood, and uh, and and we'll get started. So as you come, join, sit down, say hi uh, if you're able to join us live. If you do have a question, post in the comments. Otherwise, we're just going to jump right in because we've got a lot. So let me, without further ado, let me welcome my very special guest today, Karen Glasser. Welcome, welcome. You may recognize her. Uh, Karen is the founder of the Little White Lie Digital network, which you might already be aware of. She is also the host of a popular weekly show, uh, The Little White Lie, which you can watch right here on Facebook and her website as well. And I'll link to that today. The Little White Lie is all about the lies we tell ourselves, I love this, about getting old and how to love the age you're in. So Karen, you're joining us from Northern California. Welcome to the show. I am so excited to be here today. You and I have gotten to know each other in a very short amount of time. And how cool is this that we can connect this way? So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, it, it is super cool. I think um, you have uh, you have 40 years uh, building communities, reaching out to people, you, you know, the power of communities, the power of relationships. I've got a background in social media and somehow through the power of technology and me watching a show and me being inspired by you, we've connected and now I'm so honored to have you on the show because you have a lot to teach us. Oh. So, so thank you for joining us today. Um, Karen, I think a lot of people might be asking the same question right now, uh, and maybe that's a good place to start. What is the little white lie and um, how did that come about? Well, about a year ago when I turned 60, I decided that I had been sitting in front of a camera for five years doing my live shows and talking about authenticity. And here I was showing up with my hair not being the color that it was. I had, I've been, I'm, I'm this color and I've been this color since I was 30. And so every three weeks I would go in and get my hair colored. And every, and after 30 years of doing that, well, I can't believe I just said 30 years of doing that. Um, <laughs> I decided that I needed to actually show up as myself. Mm -hmm. And how better to do it than in front of the camera. And so I decided I was going to start this journey called The Little White Lie. And so this is my little white lie. And as you mentioned, The Little White Lie is all about the lies that we tell ourselves as we get older. And it's not just about your hair. It started out for me, my hair. But mm -hmm. for a lot of people, it's the media. You know, I'm too old to do this. And I know we're going to talk about this later on um, or retirement. I'm supposed to retire at a certain age. That's what we're being told. And uh, you need to wear certain clothes when you're over 40. That makes me absolutely crazy or certain makeup or or, yeah. or or you shouldn't have long hair when you're a certain age. So, yeah, I it's the media. And so I decided that I was on a mission. And I started this kind of small and I was telling you earlier that I stood in, I sat in front of a camera all by myself and I started to talk about this and it kind of exploded. <laughs> not my hair, not my head, but the yeah. movement. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's been pretty cool, actually. Yeah, I yeah, think, I think um, when I when first, first saw you speak you were actually explaining you were telling this story and I was like wow immediately thought of okay what's my little white lie uh because like you said we all have one mm -hmm. and mine and you had me thinking about mine and it's one thing that I've been wrestling with and I think you bring up it's such a beautiful title because we all have one and whether or not we're willing to actually vocalize it or not we all know what our little white lie is for me it was this silly thing, uh, not being able to own my height. So just to quickly explain what my little white lie, and this is Karen, this is me reflecting on having listened to, to Karen speak before. My little white lie uh, is the fact that I am six feet tall. And a lot of you might not know that because I'm usually seated. But if you've ever met me, you usually notice two things when I walk in the room. I'm really tall and I have a lot, I have big hair. My hair's big, so I'm big. Uh, but it, but I fought that bigness and it's only been until recently that I've actually not only stepped into my bigness, but when people ask me how tall I am, I actually used to say I'm 5'11 and a half. 
so not quite <laughs> six feet. And there's a whole other Oprah on why I would say that. It was the whole like male female dynamic from when I was in corporate America. It's like I knew when I was taller than a man and how that worked. And I know being taller than other women. And it was this whole mind thing. Now I'm proud to say I'm six feet tall. I say I'm six feet tall, but that's absolutely my my little white lie. And you you got me thinking about it again and just how I wasn't even aware that, I, that it was this thing. But right. we all have this thing. Oh, quick uh, hello to Kat. Hi, Kat. She's saying hi, ladies. So glad to be here, Kat. Hey, Kat. Thank you for joining us. If you want to talk about your little white lie or have a question for Karen, fire away. We will ask. But Karen, thank you so much for getting me to think about and acknowledge my little white lie. Right. Why do you think so many of us resist embracing our authentic selves? Because it's about being vulnerable. And being vulnerable is scary. Putting yourself out there in a way that people might say, what's wrong with her? Or, or really? Or did you notice her hair is white? Or why? I spent a lot of my, my career prior to this being in the public eye and always worrying about what shoes I was wearing or what if I was wearing glasses. I mean, literally would have people, I used to wear contacts and people would come up to me and say, you know, you're wearing glasses. And it was like, really? Did you just notice that? You know, and, and it stopped me from being vulnerable. And this whole little white lie thing forced me to step into my authenticity and step into who I really am. And wow, what a difference once I did that. It really was a game changer. Yeah. Totally game changer. To total game changer. And just um, just to let folks know why the heck we're talking about our little white lies. It's all about this buzzword that I keep telling my clients to do. And everyone, there's so much pressure for everyone to be authentic. And the first question I get from my clients is like, well, what does that mean? And I think, Karen, you provide through your own experience a very tangible way, even maybe just a first question to ask about us actually being honest with each other. Because what happens when, and this is my interpretation, is just asking yourself what your little white lie is. If you have clarity around that, where you're maybe struggling, you right. might be able to unearth where you might not feel aligned, whether it's your relationship, your life, your business, because it quite often kind of permeates out on that level, right? It totally does. It totally does. And and what the show has really done is when, because I bring a guest on every single week with me and we tackle all different topics about that could be a little white lie. And the very first question that I ask my guests is, so what is your little white lie? And the reason why I do that is that we all have one, as you said, and it allows the audience that's watching, whether live or on replay, to feel safe to share their little white lie too. And it's amazing um, the, the, the answers that have come out of what is your little white lie. I actually had Kat Williford on my show, and she's actually in the magazine that we're going to talk about later on. And yeah. she, she's amazing. I mean, she is, she is awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, and she talks about the masks that you wear. And it, again, it's about being authentic and taking that mask off and, and being vulnerable. So we're all in the same business. You're, you're doing the same thing. You're, you're being vulnerable. You are showing up in front of a camera. I mean, I don't know about you. I, my guess they say, I don't like the way I look in front of a camera. It's like snap yeah. out of it. You look exactly how you look. It's your yeah. mindset. So it really is about being vulnerable. And it's like the best word that I could come up with to explain when somebody says, well, what does that mean? Being authentic? Really? What does that mean? Because it's such a buzzword right now. So what does that really mean? And the best I could come up with, and I think it works is being vulnerable. Mm. And that's a scary word. Very scary. No, who, who, who wants to be vulnerable? You know, from caveman days, we're, we're, we are taught fight or flight. And when, why, you know, why would you voluntarily <laughs> right. make yourself vulnerable? It's, it's a beautiful question. I think it's a lot. What I love about little white lie is um, if you're willing to ask yourself the question, answer the question, you can, you can actually get quite deep with yourself very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause you know, I take, I do meditation. I've taken classes, you know, here in LA, it's being a yogi, spiritual, you know, asking yourself, going through the process is, is, is not only trendy, but it's it, a lot of people do it. But sometimes, you know, if it's not these deep questions, if they're not couched 
as a simple question like that, it can be like, um, I'm absolutely going to resist. And I know other, you know, other programs like Al-Anon, uh, for example, also ask those deep questions. But why they they tend to work is because they're, they they make them straight forward. So it's it's beautiful. And Kat has a beautiful comment here. I'll show it, uh, Kat. Uh, she says, I like to oh, say I vulnerability so is our greatest agree. strength. I so agree because once I let go of this, yeah, what I really realized about myself was that I had been hiding behind my shoes and my dark hair and all of those things because I had this picture in my head that that's what I needed to look like when in fact I don't. And right. it was it was cathartic. It was like, oh, I can just show up as I am. How cool is that? Yeah, <laughs> I have you, permission. I have permission to do that. And it was it truly was it it, it totally altered the direction of, of the journey that I was on. I love that. So l let me let me flip it and ask you a question here. Um, Especially because you've really you've started. It's really a movement, the little white lie movement. It's, yeah. it's, it's I, and I love it because it truly is. It's changing mindsets. Can you spot a fake, and 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 how do you spot a fake? So whether whether it's a new client or a business or a brand person, can you tell when they're being real? Well, um, uh, you know, a, a quick answer for that would be go to your next networking meeting. Okay. <laughs> And where most people show up and throw up is what I like to call it. They come with their, their stack of business cards and they start throwing business cards. You know, they're throwing up their, those are not authentic people. They, they're not showing up to find out how they can support someone else. They're showing up to sell their stuff. And that to me is not authentic. That to me is not fake. So those who show up and throw up, it's really, really clear. And it's also on social media. How many people have friended you and you accept the friendship because you went and you checked and you know the same people. And the next thing that happens the minute you accept it is a little your your messenger pops up and they're selling you their their thing. So yeah. <laughs> it's like how people for people get so excited. It's the same thing. It's it's like feeling you had to wear the heels or feeling we, we have to cut our hair off. It's like people see what other perceive right. what others perceive as success on places like social media. And this is my world. I call it a fire hose, but I like to show up and throw it better, much more visceral. <laughs> uh, but it, it's it's incredible. Or I'll meet someone at a networking event. We actually hit it off. And we we exchange emails, do the whole LinkedIn email thing. And the next thing I know, it's like, fine, OK, I see your newsletter in my inbox. Fair enough. I think that's the exchange. I'll send you mine as well. But what really grinds my gears is when I'll drop that person a personal email like, hey, how are you? It's been so I just you know, your newsletter is great. Thanks so much. And I never hear back. But I do get their next newsletter. It's like right. and to me, I, I'm just like, OK, you lost me. You lost me. You it's know. all about the lead. It, they were looking for a lead, somebody to add to their list, building their list. I mean, I heard somebody the other day. Do you want to be um, uh, uh, beta tested? Do you want to know that that you're being beta tested or that you're you're they're trying to connect you to get you to uh, opt into the list? What happened to relationship building? And that to me is what it's all about. And And I know that that's what you're about as well. It's it's about creating the relationship. So I've had that same experience. People connect. I've had people make introductions via email, you know, and we go and connect. And then the next thing I know, all of their stuff, they're just pitching their stuff. And I ended up on their email list and or they put me in their group, which I never asked to be in the group. By the way, guys, on, on Facebook, one of the things with groups, not on pages, but with groups, if you think you're inviting somebody to your group, you're not. You're actually putting them in the group. Which, as for a lot of us, that's spammy. Ask me first, would you like to be a member? And then let me go in. Tell me what the group is about. And I think, I think that some people don't realize that that's what happens. Yeah, I think so. So those of you just learning that, if you're inviting people to groups, uh, stop. Stop. And... <laughs> Because I think, yeah, I don't know if a lot of people actually knew that. And that and that's that's a little sneaky on Facebook's part, I have to yeah. say, because just using the word invite. Yes. Implies that because we don't necessarily know what the other person receives. So 
I think it's, it's just good old fashioned etiquette people tend to forget right. about when they, um, when they uh, let their business objectives get ahead of right. their, yeah. And so well, Facebook didn't start out as a business tool. Let's right. be real. Facebook started what in 2000, I don't know when, 2005, three, whatever. Yeah. I joined in 2007, I think. And it was a way to, I joined originally. I wanted to keep in touch and, and to find my old high school friends. Yeah. And find out what, that's why I joined. That's why I joined too. Somewhere in all of this, we became business focused and it's kind of lost the charm. And I have my moments where I actually say, do I really want to be on here? Do I really want? And then I, then I remember, well, I'm in business and that's how I connect and that's what I do. But how do we make it work for us yeah. in the business environment? And I think the key is relationships. Yeah, let, let's t let's talk about that, okay. because I think you have such a tremendous uh, amount of experience. Like I said, 40 plus years with with community. You've you've uh, you've got eight CDs out there. You've, you've written four books. You've got so much expertise, I think, to school us on. Technology aside, because it's so easy to get dazzling, uh, dazzled by that. What. Um, in terms of relationship building, what is your secret, or do you have a handful of kind of tips? I have a couple of tips, tips that I can that I can you know encourage people maybe to check out. And again, guys, it you know there's a lot of things that that work. Pick the one that works for you, or the ones that work for you. But the one thing that I can say right off the bat is take your online relationship offline. Mm -hmm. And there's many different ways to do this. Offline does not mean that you have to meet them for a cup of coffee in the coffee shop. Offline means that you get on a Zoom with them or a Skype where you're face-to-face, -face, camera, you're looking at them. Or use the video function right in Facebook if you want. There's video in there or, or the audio. Take it offline, meaning get to know the person. Create the relationship because I believe that with relationship building, they're going to get to know, like, and trust you. And when they're ready for the services that you offer, guess who they're going to go to? They're going to go to you because they have the relationship with you. I believe that we live in the blue sea of, of abundance, the blue ocean of abundancy. I do not live in a red sea of scarcity. And a lot of business owners feel that they're competing with others who do the same thing. You and I are in the same field. We are both digital experts. Right. I'm not threatened by you. I know you're not threatened by me. There are so many fish in, and I like to use that water, the ocean, the sea. There's so many fish in the ocean. So live in the blue you know, ocean of abundancy where you can collaborate. You and I, we're collaborating right now. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's the blue ocean of abundancy. Red sea, red sea of scarcity would be me saying, Oh, I, I don't know if I want to get to know this person because she might take my clients. No, you're not going to take my clients. They're going to resonate with you or they're going to resonate with me. And you might have people that you have talked to that do not resonate with you that you're going to send to me and vice versa. People that I talk to that I say, and we talked about it earlier. You're a web developer. I'm, I'm going to be referring you to people because, first of all, you're awesome. And second of all, you're awesome. And, mm -hmm. you know, so but that's what collaboration is about. So that's where the relationship comes in. Send them a, a greeting card. There's yeah. programs out there. Send out cards. Go sign up. Yeah. Send them a greeting card. Send them brownies. Uh, send them you know, something. Send them something that you wrote, hand wrote. In a, in, a, in, a, in a letter. So it is it is all about exact. The new location, location, location. It's relationships, relationships, and relationships. And we just and we forget about it. So, all right. So recap. If you find that maybe your relationships have kind of plateaued, look at how you're reaching out to people. See if you're kind of being a little overly salesy or maybe right. maybe you don't even mean to. Sometimes we're told how to do so many things in our business, we forget to actually gut check. So, good good great advice from Karen. So the first the first tip is take it offline. Take it offline. Now, and if you want to stay in social media, let's here's another tip. So, let's just look at Facebook as an example. We're on Facebook right now. Um, one of the things that I always do is I comment. I don't just like a post. I comment and, and I, and it, and it's hard. I mean, it takes time. Working in social media is now a business. And so it takes time. Schedule some time on your calendar, which I do. I have time on my calendar every single day that I am very, very, um, uh, focused 
on what's going on in Facebook. And I will go through and I will like things, I will comment, and that's good for the algorithms because in Facebook, the more you comment, the more you like on other people's posts and things, and, and that's why not just like, because there's a tendency to just go like, 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 make a comment, you're gonna now show up in that person's feed. That's the way the algorithms work. So if you yep. go in and start making comments, guess what? They're going to start seeing your stuff more often. That's just the way Facebook is working today, at least, because it keeps changing. But that's what they've changed the algorithm. So if you make comments, your your posts are going to show up in their feed and vice versa. You're going to see more of them. So go and just pick out some people in your friend list that you haven't talked to in a while with no other purpose than just simply connecting and go see their posts and make a comment. They're going to think, wow, I haven't heard from her in a while. And they're going to comment back. They might reach out to you. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing you bring up. Uh, Oprah is actually big about this. It, the, the energy you put behind an intention will uh, will ultimately determine what happens. Right. Exactly. And I love how you just spoke about, look, we all have a job to do. We have businesses to scale. We have revenue to bring in. We're all on social media, not always for fun. We've, we've got work to do. However, uh, what I love that you said, Karen, just now was like, it's like recognize the intention. So what she just said for you guys just tuning in is uh, she sets she dedicates time to go on social out of everything else she does to like to like comment and share things with the intention of just kind of pushing it forward and just yes. connecting. Exactly. Knowing, of course, because you have a successful business like you and I both know the byproduct of that, it always comes back. So it's almost like the more the more positive intention, the more you support other people, right. the greater the, the the return. And so my advice would be follow Karen's advice and dedicate time to just connecting versus like a sale at the end of the day would be great. But it's kind of like the, the, the strategy I have for this show is like, obviously it helps my business, but what fires me up is the producing side. It's like, Oh my gosh, I get to meet people like Karen. And then she right. honors me by being on my show. Oh, thank you. And I can bring awareness to her brand. Every, I like everybody wins. So it's, I collab it's collaboration. It's joint. It's a joint venture of sorts, but let's talk the elephant in the social media room right now. I know that the people that are listening going, Oh my God, how am I supposed to, uh, there's, there's too many social media platforms out of it. How, which ones? So, I say, take a look at the ones that you, that are out there. There's Twitter, there's Instagram, there's Pinterest, there's, there's Facebook, there's LinkedIn. I call it a social media because it, it, it's more business. It's obviously business, but it's one of the things out there. And, and pick the ones that work for you. Anyone that says to you, oh, you gotta be on every single social media, they're blowing smoke. That you do yeah. not have to be on every social media. If you yeah. are in a, a visual industry, meaning you, if you're an artist or you have, you're, you're selling jewelry or whatever, Pinterest is a great place for you because it's all photos. So is Instagram, but Pinterest is even better because you can put links in each one of your pins that you do and to send them back to you. Instagram is a little more challenging on that. You can put some really beautiful pictures, but then you have to say link is in the profile because you cannot put hyperlink, meaning for those who are listening that have never done this before, people can't just put their finger on it and something will open up. So there is a little bit of a challenge that way. You have you have to get kind of um, um, uh, tricky with that and, and you know, put, put change out your link in your profile, which you can do on a regular basis, which I did for my magazine. So the link to the magazine is sitting in my Instagram, but eventually I'll take that out of there and put my website back in there. So pick the social media that works for you. Twitter has gone up to 280 characters. I don't even have that much to say. So, <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. that's crazy. Yeah. But that's another place. If you are going to tweet, you ha go and respond to the people that are liking. You're, you're, even if they just like it, say, I'm, thank you for liking my post. Even mm -hmm. that is a response that they know you're a live person and not a bot because there are so many bots out there now, you know, yeah. fake, yeah. fake things. Yeah, you, well, you, you hit it on the head. It's it's incredible, like, because I obviously work in social media professionally. I'm always uh, blown away by how much just the average consumer kind of knows about, and maybe it's because we're all a little bit suspect now of social media, probably because right. of fake news or whatever. People are asking a lot more questions. 
people are starting to get a lot more aware of when automation and bots are happening. Right. And I think it goes back to this whole message of authenticity. And for me, how I can spot a fake immediately on, on social is like is is when I get a generic answer automatically from a bot. And while that that sucks and that's probably only going to get worse before it gets better. On right. the flip side, it's almost like receiving a handwritten note versus an email. On the flip side, when I do receive a genuine comment, a like or a share, I'm just like, that still stands out. Right. So if, and if I'm, you guys, I'm not but, against bots, I'm not against against neither bots. mind. I use them too. But the I believe that you can get the best of both worlds and you should be checking your inbox in on your page that you yes. put that bot on and you bots are, you can go to many chat and pick, you know, create a bot pretty simply. That mm -hmm. means automated message in your message, go in there and now comment live, which is how we met you. Right. I think you, you learn more or whatever you did to get, I don't even know what my bot says to be honest, that how embarrassing yeah. is that. And I go and check and I then made a regular message and a real live person message yeah. and then we connected. So that's a perfect study of how that you can use the bots. Don't rely on the automation piece of it as that's just going to be the only way you're going to connect with somebody because people are getting savvy. As you said, they're getting savvy. And they're, I watched a show the other day, a live show where they were they said, now the thing is put this word in the comments. And somebody says, I feel a bot coming on. They literally put that in the comments because, and it was somebody that I didn't recognize. So not in the digital space because I pretty much, I'm pr I at least no names. So your regular Joe is getting pretty savvy and they're not liking it. They're not no. liking it. No, they're not. It's, it, I think like any tool, it's clunky and probably overly used in, in a bad way. I think we're going to see a, a do's and don'ts like everything else in social media. Right. It was kind of like what happened with hashtags, and now right. the rule of thumb on places like Instagram is like, don't spam people even with hashtags. Put them in your comments versus your posts. It's like you, you right. we see this evolution, this etiquette kind of evolve. With basically right. people get annoyed, and then there's a new set of rules that are put out. and And I, right. I kind of like that about social. I do. I do too. I do too. And so I actually, I mean, I love social media. It's social media is like the old Fabergé commercial. I don't know if you were. I, and I, uh, they sent me about the shampoo and I told two friends and they told two friends and so on and so on. That's how I look at social media. It's about not just who do you know, but who do you know that knows the people that you need to know? Correct. Absolutely. You know, you know, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, it's like if we didn't love social media, we still wouldn't be here. Um, right. I am blown away every day by the power of social media and it right. typically involves how amazing this tool allows us to simply connect with one another. So it all comes back to connection. It's not like, oh, how smart was your branding? Like, I appreciate that. But what 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 delights me is when I see uh, members of this community connect directly with someone who's an influencer or her, of, of right. stature through a casual conversation on Twitter. And then you see the result of it is oh, they're working together now. And it's like only through the power of them both loving something, coming exactly. together social and that's it's, exciting that's it's a exciting thing. yeah that's very exciting and i and again it takes time and i i, I can't impress that point enough that you ha it does take time you're not just going to go in for five minutes and you know take a look or get sucked down the rabbit hole and start looking at the timeline and not and reading the fake news and clicking on links and being sent somewhere else if you're going to use social media for your business to create the visibility and the authenticity because vid especially video live video people mm. get to the conversation model is 7% is the words the rest is the physicality mm -hmm. so you notice i talk with my hands people that people know i talk with my hands all the time. Sometimes I sit on them, but I talk with my hands. So people get to know me. They see my smile. They hear the tone of my voice. They see mm. like, uh, that I'm moving around a lot. That's either going to resonate with them or not. Either they're going right. to say, oh, my God, this woman has ADD or something. She's all over the place, which I don't. But right. sometimes I think I do. Um, but they get to know me, the person on video. That is why I've been doing video for so many years. I started live streaming in the early 90s. So let's, I mean, let's talk about being ahead of the curve. Back in the early 90s, nobody even knew what this was about. And I was like, oh, but you got to do it. It's so cool. <laughs> They're like, she's like a rocket scientist. What is yeah, this? Really? Exactly. This I wanted to give Kat a quick shout out before she drops off. Uh, thanks, Kat, for joining us today. She has, she has to jump off on a conference call, but. Thank you so much for loving the conversation, for joining us. We Thank appreciate you. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, definitely. And she says she'll watch later. So for those of you joining us live, thank you. And then obviously, you can always the beautiful thing about the be live the platform I broadcast on is it lives and breathes forever on my profile on my page. So you can pause here now if you want or keep watching. As I like to say, ad nauseum, ad, ad nauseum, ad nauseum. it lives forever and ever and ever until you take it off. So it's a good yeah. thing, though. I think it's totally a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's talk a little bit more about because uh, you're talking about how relationships authenticity resonates. What in your mind, uh, in your experience, what are today's customers looking for in a brand? I get this question all the time and I could speak forever on it, but I'm really interested in your take on it. Uh, well, first of all, they're looking they're looking for somebody that they can relate to, I think. Um, so I, we're where a lot of people would say brand is your logo or brand is the uh, your website that incorporates your logo. I I I kind of look at brand as I'm my brand. I am the brand. So I want people to get to know me personally. And so everything that I do from my live shows to my repurposing it's I, th I think that people want to know the person that they're going to be working with because we have gone and we're going through a huge transition right now in the Internet marketing space, which I, I'll just mm -hmm. leave there, um, where people would pitch a bunch of other people's stuff and the, or they would pitch how to sell. Rather than and they themselves, that is their business, how to sell to teach somebody else. So I think people are looking for those that are a successful in their industry. Yes. Not just somebody who's teaching something that they're not, their business is the teaching of and they themselves don't have a successful business. So number one, I think they want to have successful, they, they want to make sure. So do your homework, guys. Find out who has used them in the past. Don't be afraid to ask the person that you're going to meet with. Um, do you have any, can, is there somebody that you can introduce me to that has used your services? Um, if they don't have anybody, that's like run, run in the other way, unless the person is brand spanking new and they got to start somewhere and you really have felt that there's a connection there, then go ahead and be their first person. But be aware if you're the first person, you might want to work a little more hands on close with them. Um, I think secondly is the, the relationship aspect and the authenticity aspect. So it, it's just show again, it goes back to showing up who you are so that people can know who you are and want to work with you. That's I think that's the that's what they're looking for. I, I believe that they're looking for when they're looking for um, somebody to help them or, or um, looking in terms of the branding and all that other stuff. Yeah, it, it's beautiful. It's like how many times have we run into this where you meet someone face to face after perhaps connecting with them online and they're not, you can tell right. them straight away. They're not, it's yeah. not like they were lying, but they're not, they're not, I love the British saying, they're not who they say they are. They're not who they say they are on the tin or whatever. It's sort of well, like, well, can we talk about photos on Facebook? Can oh, we talk sure. about profile photos on Facebook? How oh, many filters? Times? Yeah. Filters oh my gosh. But, but mm -hmm. just the pictures, how many people do you know? that have a picture that's 10 years old that's sitting there. Yeah. And then you and then you go and meet them in person and you can't find them. <laughs> it's kind of like for me and like no it's I experienced that, you know, the online dating world is fun too. Uh we'll just leave that there, but yeah, it's sort of like you wouldn't do something like that if you were going on a date. Why would you do something like that if you right. were connecting with a it it it's crazy. It happens all the time. And yeah, you know, I think headshots you know there's always the excuse of like i see it on a website persona level where they're like i really need to redo my website it's like yeah you do because yeah, it, screams, do. it screams 1998 and it's actually like the first thing people see but let's talk about that later but yeah. we see it on the headshot oh i need to get new headshots it's like well then get new headshots because people forget like it's still a human it's right. still a human connection that kind of sells. Exactly. Right. You want them to, after looking at your picture and when they see you live, go, oh, my God, you are exactly who you say you are, which is why my picture has my white hair. Because for the longest time, I had the dark hair and my roots started to come in and I didn't look like myself. So that's why I change my pictures out as I do pictures. I want people to know who I am. Absolutely. And what and why wouldn't you? This is beautiful advice for anyone who is their product. So I work with, as you do, Karen, uh, coaches, 
teachers, authors, people who are literally their brand. You were just talking about it. The first conversation we have is typically like, well, you need to look, feel, sound, be yourself so that everything coming out of here and out in the digital world is absolutely right. authentic. Absolutely. Um, but even if you aren't your brand, let's say you are leading a team for a corporation or, or, or maybe even a nonprofit. Let's say you could even still be senior management, but you're working for a company. I think certainly from a professional branding standpoint, you could follow the same advice, but also your business could follow the same advice. Right. Um, another thing I've learned is businesses can shoot off and be successful. And then in five, 10, 15 years, the trajectory of the business went this way and the founders this way. Right. And that's typically when they have a disconnect. And then you might see other weird things like culture is off. And that's when they need you. Yeah, that's a, that's when they need me. Together. Right, exactly. And then I'll give Karen a call and be like, they need a little white lie conversation because they're not <laughs> acknowledging their gray hair. So they're just, just so you know. But, um, but yeah, so our advice to you is, um, uh, you know, I, I think people, and backing it up, I think people get intimidated when we start talking about authenticity. But again, we're having this conversation based on our backgrounds, knowing it absolutely applies to life business relationships because right. you can all spot a fake and if you're looking for people to spend their time and money with you if they think there's just even a, a, a an iota of of doubt they have 10 other choices that's and, right and stand out gotta stand, stand out. out it's not rocket science either in terms of doing it so be yourself do your homework uh focus on taking it offline these are sort of gems that uh, that Karen is, is giving us. So, um, so absolutely. Um, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. How it, in, it's kind of along the same lines in this race for sort of better, faster, stronger content. You spoke a little bit about it earlier. What's the one thing that we should remember? Well, you know, squirrel moments. We tend to, to we as humans, tend to go after the shiny, bright objects. Guilty. So, yeah, me too, me too. So stay in your own lane, stay true to your message, stay tr back to the brand, stay true to what you, your message is and make sure that, you know, we talk about the elevator speech or you, you need, and you, the, you know where that comes from. You, ha you have to be able to tell somebody what you do by the time the elevator gets up to the, the top floor. But whatever it is, you need to be able to explain what you do very quickly and stay true to what your message is. Don't talk about the fact that you are um, somebody who does digital marketing, but you're out there selling cars. <laughs> it, it, you know, and that's a that obviously is not going to happen. But, but the point is, stay true to what your message is. You can't do it all. And that's another message. You cannot do it all. You can and do it well. Um, you, you, I guess you can do it all and, and not do nothing well, but you can't do everything. And that's something that I have learned. I used to think I could do everything and I said yes to everything. And then stress because I have the personality that says, I said yes, I need to get it done now. And so I'm learning how to say no. So if it doesn't stay in your lane, if somebody comes to you and asks you, this is a great way to collaborate with other people. Refer them to somebody that does it. it. It makes it makes sense and stay in your own lane. Stay on your own message. Don't get distracted by other people who might throw something your way and you say, oh, that, that might work with my thing. It may not either. So make sure that you are doing the income producing activities. Make sure that you are um, outsourcing if you have the finances to do. The stuff that needs to get done that, yes, you can do it, but you're better, you better spend your time at those income producing activities. And what I mean by that, relationship building, that's an income producing activity. You're not going to ask your VA to go have a coffee with somebody or to get online with them. You need to do that. And so these are the things that will help you stay on message and stay in your own lane. Oh, such good advice. Uh, it's like, I think I'm going to rewind and hit play and transcribe that and print it on my wall. Um, just sage advice, you guys. And it's just like a good reminder for us to do that. So stay in your lane. Um, you know, stay true to your own message. Powerful stuff.
Yeah. Karen, uh, let's do some myth busting. Uh, so we're talking about social media and it used to be a sort of a young man's game. Talk about how you feel about social media, specifically when it comes to age, because I know you have a strong POV on this. Um, is age just a number when it comes to social media? Like, you know, I, I, I'm not going to go all out and say everybody can do social media. You know, you get there. My mom, my mom, let me use my mother as an example. My mother is um, on Facebook, but she will insist she's not on Facebook. But she will go on Facebook and like pictures or send messages, but she insists she's not on Facebook. So the concept of social media, and she's 82. Oh, so, why not? You know, so she's there because she wants to see the grandkids. That's That was kind of how she got on. But totally. the, the, the idea of social media, I mean, she just does, has no clues to what I do. And it's okay. But women, men who are 60, 70, that are still working full time and they're in businesses, it's not, this is not rocket science. You said this earlier. Pick the one that works for you. I believe that for the most part, for the most part, my mother aside and some other people, yes, you can. You can get involved in social media. I think where the hang up is, is that the minute you step in, somebody's going to tell you, oh, you should also be on here and you should go here and you should go here. No, I'm going to say it again. No, just pick one. If, mm -hmm. if, if just pick one and learn it the best you can or find somebody who can help you. Um, it's not, it's not rocket science. So I do believe that social media is something that most people can and should do because marketing has changed. It used to be you could put an ad in the yellow pages. Now the yellow pages is a great way to prop your grandkids up or your kids up at the dinner table. Who uses the yellow pages? It used to be that you would buy um, display ads in newspapers and in mm -hmm. magazines. Yes, there's still magazines and newspapers out there, but look at they're getting smaller and they're and they're they're expensive. So look at at marketing, but marketing on Facebook. We talked earlier about this. Spend some money on Facebook. You know, they're not they're in business. They're guys. Facebook's a business. They're in mm -hmm. business to make money. That's why it's there. And if you want your business to get seen, especially with the algorithms that have changed now, if you they you have to pay to play, but you don't have it's not doesn't have to be expensive. You can spend 15 bucks. You can spend five bucks if you want to get a little boost. So mm -hmm. it's it's for businesses that are people are kind of like the what I say the water is fine. Come on in. And, you know, just take baby steps, take baby steps, you know, go on your personal profile and, and share something. I share quotes on my personal profile. I share funny pictures on my phone, you know, on my Facebook profile. In fact, people that know me know that when I post something like that, it's how I'm feeling. That's a secret, guys. I just let that out. Um, so when when people go on my personal profile and they see some things that are kind of out there and out there and some of them are funny and some of them are not so funny. That's mm -hmm. how I'm feeling in the morning. So that's what I put out there. And again, it's about relationship building. People get to know the real me. Yeah. That's another way to build a relationship. Yeah. It, um, you hit on a lot of, a lot of things, I think. So for, for you guys having questions about which channel, I think Facebook is a good place to start because I think it's kind of the, the catch all for, for, for all demographics. But like Karen said, do your homework. Start with Facebook because I think you'll, get a, a sense very quickly about whether or not you you uh, are welcome in the space. The first tip I always tell my clients is like, see where your competitors are, not that you're going to market yourself like your competitors, but chances are they've done the homework too. So if there are people you admire in your field that you follow or competitors, see where they are and maybe see where they aren't. Um, and then just concentrate your efforts on, on, on one or two um Social media. I like to give the analogy that Twitter is sort of like being at a bar. Yeah. One line, very quick. It, it passes. It's gone. Facebook is like being at a barbecue. Yeah. You know, and a barbecue, you talk to people, you have communication, you have conversations, then you move and you go somewhere else and you have another mm -hmm. conversation, eat some good food. And you know how people take pictures of their food and they put it out there. So mm -hmm. Facebook's like a barbecue and barbecues are fun. Instagram's kind of like a festival to me. Yes. It's kind of like a mix, sort of like lots of noise, very visual. You have little pods of people loving things, right. taking photos of, uh, of the visual. Yeah. I love that analogy. So the bar versus the barbecue versus yep. the festival. And depending on your industry, obviously some 
right. uh, some yield. Now, um, we're getting a little closer to the top of the hour, so I don't want to forget a really cool piece of news that you just shared, and you mentioned magazines earlier. Um, one of my last questions for you is, how is your business embracing technology? Um, you've already spoken a little bit about this, but specifically to your brand, and can you kind of let us in on some news? Uh, because Absolutely. I think this is a piece of content people are going to really like. So, and one will lead into the other. So, how I market, how do I use my digital assets? So, the first thing I do is I do a live. I do a live stream. Then I take the live stream and I get it transcribed. And then the uh, live gets sent over to YouTube because I like to have it in multiple places. Um, and it goes automatic, I'd like to say automatically over there, but I go yeah. over and I make sure that I um, search engine optimize it, make sure there's keywords in there. and Guys, make sure you have a call to action with everything that you put out. Tell people what you want them to do next. Most people have not a clue as what to do next, so I'll get off my soapbox. Then I take the uh, the video and I create a blog post around it. And I embed the video right into the blog post. Why do I do that? Because when people watch the uh, video right in the blog post, the, the numbers go up on your Facebook profile be or wherever you're doing this because it's embedded, meaning that it's the same exact entity. And then I put it into syndication. And I use a really cool program called Q Promote, Q-U-U-U Promote. And they've, they've got it going on. I mean, they've got a great business model. Uh, those of us who create content, we pay them to put our content out. And then they also are the middlemen to people that are looking for content to put out. And so I take my um, blog post that has the Facebook Lives embedded right in there, and I put them out in a syndication. And it's not unusual to get anywhere between 600 and 1,000 shares on a blog post. Pretty powerful. So that all leads into the new thing that I have. I launched in October. It was the first, the premier issue of the Little White Lie digital magazine. Mm -hmm. And this, it's way cool because it was another way for me to repurpose the content that I had already created and give it new, fresh blood and, 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 and show people what they can do. So we embedded the shows right into the magazine. We embedded videos. We, um, we took three points. I, I, we went to four of our contributors who ended up in the magazine. We took uh, three talking points from them, and we put them into the magazine so people can, depending on how they consume their information, they can get it quickly by getting those three talking points, or they can watch the video, or they can read the article. So you've got the magazine up right now, which is way cool. Thank you for putting it up. I'm so proud of this. Um, it it flips just like a magazine. You can put it on your computer, you can put it on your phone, and you can put it on your your um, tablets. But you'll see there's a video in there. When you click on it, people can watch the video in there. There's contact information and the point. So it's it's kind of cool. So, you know, here we go. We got, here's a show. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear sound here because uh, I, I think when you're sharing screen, the sound doesn't come through. I'm not sure. Yeah, um, and that's a BeLive thing. So, but when you, so I'm encouraging everyone to go and check out the Little White Lie Digital Magazine. I know that, um, Jessica, you're going to put a link in there um, for people to do that. It's free, it's complimentary, it does not cost anything, and it's a quarterly magazine. The next magazine is coming out in the first quarter of 2018. Wow, 2018. We're already at 2018. Uh, so the next issue will come out then. And um, if you subscribe you, quarterly, you'll get that magazine sent to your email box. Again, we're not selling anything. This is really a way for you to get a taste of the movement. So I'm really, really proud of it. It's um, and as someone who has subscribed to it, let me just quickly get that. So that link, you guys, is right in the comments. Any questions uh, on that, you can... Um, DM me or Karen, but if you have any uh, trouble with that link, but it is an absolutely stunning Thank you. magazine. Um, and as someone who is, look, 24 seven, I'm social media. And I, what I love about the magazine is it's digital friendly. Let's be real. I have an iPad, but when I'm reading it, it's, it's, it's not only packed with content and beautiful. I don't see one ad anywhere. It is just content served to me. Uh, and I can read it in my own, my own pace. Uh, Long form media is not dead. In fact, there's a hunger now 
for us to be able to kind of focus on one piece of content. That's why medium has become so popular. But right. what I love about your magazine, Karen, is the fact that I can literally step away from my my computer or take it with me and just flip through it. And it's like the last time I felt like that was like I used to read Vogue or Vanity Fair, you know, the thick issues with like, right. you know, Kate, Kate Blanchett, like spring actress, like right. I would just right. go away and read that sucker. And I just feel like this magazine, I can just go away and read it and dip in and out. And I don't have to sit on my laptop and thumb through or it's not another Facebook post. So thank you, you guys. Take take advantage of it. Just sign up. I got it in 15 seconds. It was in my inbox uh, and I clicked on it in a lovely note from Karen. So um, I can't wait to kind of finish it. Like I'm still thumbing my way through it. But um, I'm, I'm noticing yeah. you have Kat Williford. She's one of the contributors. She was on the show earlier. Uh, and so she's actually in that uh, in the screen there. And look at the quotas. Vulnerability is our greatest strength. I know. Isn't that funny? You don't know where to. I saw Stephen do it, Healy doing this earlier. Kat, that was totally organic. But look, you're like you're here in spirit because we know you had to jump away. But here she is. She's still with us. Is she still with us? <laughs> but yeah, it's so it's um. what I love about the magazine is you go deep in a lot of, of, of areas like we said at the top of the hour. It's sort of it can be a little intimidating to answer this whole this right. whole question about about authenticity. So, again, if you have any questions about the magazine, ask me, ask Karen, the links in the comments. Um, and of course, if you go to her website, you can find it right there as well. Um, it's, it's inspiring. One of these days I'll get around to creating a digital magazine. It's been one of my it's 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 on my list. But until then, I'm just going to enjoy yours because well, <laughs> I think it'll be inspire me to do <laughs> to do it. Thank you. So that we're we're getting near the top of the hour. Karen, any kind of parting words to to folks? We've talked about a ton of things. We've talked about what our little white lie is. We've talked about relationships, connecting, how to spot a fake, the rules we can remember because it's not like it's new rules. The rules we should remember about the fact that it is a human medium. Anything else you you'd like us to sort of remember? I, I, I just, I, you know, want to bring it back to the little white lie and, and that we all have one. And, and I encourage people to just take a few minutes or, or half an hour or whatever time you want and, and sit back and think, what are those things that you're hiding from yourself or that you're hiding behind that, um, if, if you were to only jump into it, it could be game changing because I really do believe that when we jump in, it is game changing, no matter what what it is, whether it's media, whether it's social media, whether it's uh, plastic surgery, whether it's whatever it is. I'm not I am not the person who says, don't get go get plastic surgery. That's not my message. If you want to do plastic surgery, by all means, do it. But make sure you're doing it for the right reason, not because somebody told you that you're supposed to look a certain way and you're buying into all of that stuff. So it's about. Uh, you know, stepping into it, whether it's retirement, death. I mean, we, there's a there's a whole thing around dying and what we tell ourselves about dying. So these are the kind of topics that we that we you know do each week. Not all of them at one time. We do one at a time, and they're short. By the way, the shows are only about ten minutes long because I have the attention span of a flea. However, this hour just kind of raced by. So maybe I need to lengthen my shows. I don't know. Awesome. So that really is my message is is to get really real about yeah. who you are and um, ask yourself those hard questions, because when you do and you ask it enough and you settle into it, they're not a hard question anymore. And it's going to be it's going to change the way you show up in the world. Beautiful, beautiful words from from Karen. So and if you're not real, we're going to find you. <laughs> and <laughs> Or Karen's going to find you or I'm going to find you and I'll send Karen. Um, Karen, where can people um, speaking of find, where can people find you? Where's the best place for them to go? Click right now and follow you. Well, um, Karen Glasser with a C, C A R E N G L A S S E R on Instagram and Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. Or go to the Little White Lie Digital Network. Just put those words into the search on Facebook and go check out the page. All of the shows are there. And we also have a group called the Little White Lie Network. Um, where it's you can put posts in there and you can share what you're doing. Again, it's not a spam thing. It's not a selling thing, but to share and to get help and to get to ask questions. I'm in there all the time and we have a lot of other people that go in there. So I really encourage you to go check that out as well. Lots of free resources here um, to help you step into your game. 
authentic. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. And I'll link to all of that uh, in the agenda as well or in the comments. Uh, so basically, just go you've got beautiful SEO. If you just Google little the little white lie or Karen's name, she'll pop right up. And <laughs> your website is so handy. It's like you, you, you beautifully link to everything. But again, um, just check the comments because that's that's your easiest bet to finding her. And of course, she's right here on Facebook. So start your search there. Uh, just clicking over. She's tagged in this post. Um, and then you can start owning your little white lie like I did it's, it's it's only a little thing like my actual physical height but that's cool um, you know. I told you I want to be you when I grow up I want to be tall that's why I wore the high heels I wanted to be tall so that's a whole nother conversation that's a whole other case so you can be me and I'll be you how's that it works for me <laughs> totally works for me all right everyone thanks for joining us uh, live let's say a fond farewell to Karen and let her go and I'll just wrap up a few other things but again, Karen Glasser, thank you so much for joining us today. The Little White Lie Digital Network. Check it out. Grab the magazine. Thank follow you. her social and watch her show. It's awesome. Oh, you always have great, great guests. So thank you. Thank you so much, Karen, for joining us. See you later. Bye bye. All right. See you. All right. So a couple of uh, parting words for you guys. Thank you so much for joining. And again, uh, if if you missed all this conversation, just go right up and, and, and hit uh, refresh. Watch the whole thing. Uh, if you've got questions for Karen and you're watching this on the replay, either here on Facebook or maybe you found this video over on YouTube. Uh, first off, if you're on YouTube, jump over to my Facebook page. That's Jessica Payne official over on uh, face, Facebook and I'll link to it here. If you're on Facebook already, just um, drop a comment or question for Karen. You can always also find her on her channels uh, as well. One thing I wanted to bring up because we've got a ton of downloads and I don't always bring this up in the show. We talked today about um, impact and, uh, and authenticity and the power of being uh, what I like to say real, not perfect. So uh, just a reminder, if if you want to know kind of more of the tactical ways of doing that on social, here is a good place to start. Um, if you've seen me mention it in other uh, shows, you might uh, know about it already, but you might not know that I actually have a cheat sheet out and it's called uh, how to inspire action on social media in five simple steps. And quite honestly, you can apply this to life or business too. So I'm going to link to it right now so you can download it. We've actually got thousands of downloads of this. Um, which, to be honest, I didn't know how interested people would be about creating positive impact. And then, I don't know, the election happened. And I think right now a lot of people are interested in growing their business, interested in growing their nonprofit or their charity or their organization, or maybe showing up as they really are. Uh, but they don't always necessarily know where to look. So if you download my cheat sheet, which I'll link to in the comments, again, it's called How to Inspire Action in Social Media in Five Simple Steps. It's what I like to say your first step into putting purpose behind everything you do on social media. So it's five simple steps. And then when you sign up for it, you actually get a couple of other things. You get a few more emails from me with podcasts and videos to kind of break that process down for you so that you can quickly memorize what those five steps are and constantly check back to it. So whether you're sitting down to tweet or you're brainstorming a new idea or you're trying to think of how to bring your brand on social media, all you do is follow these five simple steps. And like I said, thousands of downloads of this, it's free. And I've, got, I've gotten a huge return for it uh, in terms of just feedback. So I'm going to continue to talk about impact and positivity, but I wanted to make sure that you knew about my uh, cheat sheet. Here it is again. Uh, the link is right smack dab in the comments. And again, when you download it, uh, you get a bunch of other stuff too, like videos and, uh, and posts and whatnot. So more on that front. So any questions, comments for me? Guys, thanks so much for watching today. We are uh, one minute away from the top of the hour, so I'm going to sign off. Again, Karen Glasser joined us today. It was a, it was a phenomenal show. Um, thank you so much for Kat for joining us and for everyone else who can join us later. If you want to be a guest on the show, DM me through this or reach out on my website, which is jessicapayne.us, uh, which you can link to right by YouTube or Facebook, and let me know. Uh, all I ask is that you're an entrepreneur or you're someone who has experienced um, success or creating impact through your life or your business and who's creating positive change. That's it. So um, thank you so much for watching. You guys have a beautiful week and I'll see you on the next show. Bye.
podcast you just heard was recorded with Anchor. If you want to make your own, download the Android or iOS app completely free from anchor.fm slash podcast. That's anchor.fm slash podcast.